Where should the support staff be located? Can we have remote services of support? Am I asking enough questions here? Right? The whole point is, folks, this is all about questions. So please, you know, it's not about me trying to provide answers, but I'm hoping that you can sort of think through this because it's going to make it easier in the long run. Uh, and do we have the skills? <coughs> Fairly self explanatory Finally, the regulatory body. Are we able to formulate our own policies and procedures? Let's hope so. Let's get that part. What are the governmental and legal requirements? What about redelegation? Is that something we're able to take care of on our own? It's important. Should we be moving from, a, from a, an existing uh, delegate? What about recruiting, recruiting local and international registrars? How are we going to go about that? Do we do that from an internal staff member? Does our registry provider, are they expected to provide registrars? Because they've got registrars already connected to them. Uh, and finally, the testing and accreditation of registrars. Should our registry provider do that? And once again, should that be something that's left in our lab? How much of that do we want to handle? How many resources do we have to be able to deal with all that? Finally, importantly, what about marketing the main space? Whose responsibility is that? What sort of contract are we going to have with our, with our registry provider? Is it going to be a per domain um, contract where you want them to be incentivized to market the namespace because they're going to win by because you're going to get more volume of domains? So marketing the namespace is also very, very key. Blank. Okay, so in summary, um, here we have the, the five pillars, if you like, uh, differently represented, and a brief explanation. The reason we have it on this is for the next slide. Maybe I hope this goes right. So the, the, the idea of this next part is to show that all of those sections I just mentioned can be all done yourself or done by somebody else or a mixture of the two. There is no set uh, solution here. You can give out your DNS. Someone else can manage that for you. You can still run the registry yourself. You can give out the registry and the technical management of the registry, but still manage your own DNS. There is no one solution here, okay? But there are many, many, many different permutations. You need to decide which one of these you want to do before going out and asking your registry, uh, if you need to decide to go for a registry uh, provider, you need to have an understanding of this so you're asking us the right questions and we can deliver the right product for you. So if we're outsourcing, we're gonna, we've decided we're going to go to somebody else. Uh, what if we do do that, and we have those, so now our resources, because we've put a lot of whatever one of those columns, and we've gone and said we want to get someone else to do it, because we've done that, now we're able to use our internal resources to do other things. We don't have to focus on each of these areas that we've, we've farmed out. We have the benefit of it having been done before. We're not being pioneers or, or, or trailblazers. And as you know, in this industry, once again, being mission critical infrastructure, this is not something where you want to be just trying it for the first time and seeing how it works. You need to know it's going to. And sometimes an outsource provider can give you that confidence, that comfort. They have the experience and expertise, obviously. It can save you money. Um, and it can improve the quality of the product. It can also cost you more money. But it depends on how much of that headache you want to take away and what premium you're prepared to pay for that. And once again, there is certainly going through contractual arrangements. SLAs are in place now. Well, you ask the provider to make sure that they have service level agreements and they're going to keep a 99.95 DNS time or whatever it is, responsible. So once again, as I started off with, you know, IDNs is going to impact each and every one of you and therefore the registry solution you have. If you're not IDN enabled, you will need to be. So you're going to have to do something with your registry software. So, as we've said, and we've heard some presentations here, it's gathering momentum, it's coming, it's on the horizon. It's not an if, but it's a when. Uh, what will the local requirements be for our IDNs? What is the policy? We need to start this whole process again almost, as we've just been through here with respect to IDNs. How is the policy going to impact the technology? And I'll be critical, and can our registry solution cope with, um, cope with these requirements, these new requirements? <coughs> Okay, so finally moving along to tender. So do you go to tender? I don't know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you can just give it out. But if you decide to 
ask someone or put it to a competitive process. There's a few key things to do and it's very, very frustrating on our behalf if you don't give us all the information. If you don't give us all the information and then you ask us to sign on the bottom line that you are going to do everything. How do we know that we're going to do everything? How do we know if you've asked us that we must conform to your existing infrastructure but then you don't provide us with your existing infrastructure? I'm not going to sign that contract.